How's it going everyone? Adam Bonjavani back here with another Thursday video on Online Book Club.org's official YouTube channel and Facebook page. Now today I have our Book of the Month author for March, Van Fleischer, talking with me. Now Van's such an amazing author and he's giving back with this book and you'll find out a little bit more about that in the interview. So let's get right into it. I am here with our Book of the Month author for March of 2018, the author of Final Notice, Van Fleischer. Van, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for ju jumping on call and uh, joining us for the show. Okay, no problem. Let's start off by talking about your book, Final Notice. Van, give us a little bit of a description of Final Notice. Okay. Um, <laughs> happy to do that. Now, Final Notice is really sort of an amalgam uh, of sci-fi, personal choices that people make, okay. social issues, and gun control. Wow. Um, and it answers the question that I pose in the subtitle, essentially, what would you do if you knew for certain that you had one, two, or three weeks to live? Um, my main protagonists are seniors, uh, and there are also a good number of immigrants or descendants of immigrants as main characters. And admittedly, this book is some progressive fun at the expense of the NRA and the far right. Oh, wow. Okay, so also with this book, I know we've talked about it uh, in our email exchange, but apparently there's people who won't read it because it's anti-gun. How do you respond to people who say that? How do you respond to people who won't read your book just because of its view? Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I, I think unfortunately this country has gotten very hardened in their opinions about things and nobody mm -hmm. wants to really listen to someone else. But first of all, with respect to it being anti-gun, I have a gun. Mm -hmm. um, and and I and I I've hunted. Um, I don't have a problem with guns. I have okay. a problem with the lack of gun control. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with people like a kid with a who's mentally unbalanced can get an a, uh, an AR-15 mm -hmm. or extended clips. It's I mean the logical stuff that many many even NRA members um will go along with but unfortunately that's not the agenda of the nra it's really courageous of you to take a stand on something in my opinion because for the most part i feel like a lot of people would take the easy way out about and, and write about something that might not be as controversial so when you were when you were going into writing this did you sit back and think you know what this might stir some people or might rub some people the wrong way or did you feel like it, it was kind of like your duty to write about something you were passionate about i'm not sure if it might if I felt it was my duty, mm -hmm. but certainly I, I wanted to write something I was passionate about mm -hmm. because I, if I put my heart into it, I thought I would come up with a better product. Mm -hmm. And and in, at first, I did this probably more for myself. Um, to um, it was just really cathartic, and I just I wanted to talk about some of these issues. But as as people started reading it and and sent me messages and comments. They thanked me for bringing wow. these issues up, and 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 that's why I, I guess I've I've gone from you know I'm just having some fun writing it to now feeling pretty driven to get the book out there because it is relevant and mm -hmm. it is important in what's happening today. Oh, for it's definitely relevant, especially after everything that's been happening, all these school shootings that are absolutely terrible. So you also, though, not only are you writing this book about a topic that you feel strongly about, but you're donating a, do a dollar, right, for every download or purchase for the month of March to a number of gun safety groups. So that's an amazing thing that you're doing. You want to talk a little bit more about that? Well, I, I, going back to, to uh, what I said about people talking about the importance of this, I, I want to get the book out there. It's... Mm -hmm. it's you know, it's, I never wrote this to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the point. And the royalties I get, uh, a dollar will, uh, you know, I can, I can afford a dollar a book. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm trying to actually do more for some of these organizations that, that I feel uh, are and just they do an amazing job. And I guess if I had millions of dollars, I would give them a lot of it right <laughs> now. I don't have millions. So I'm quite happy to give them a dollar a book. Um, and if it, especially if it, if it helps put that book in someone's hands and, and has them read that book and think about the issues that I explore. 
I like that because I feel like most people they read they, they read and they act inside their comfort zone. So what you're doing is is presenting this book and even if people heavily disagree with what you're saying, all you're kind of asking is say, hey, pick up the book. If you if you finish it and still disagree, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But just give the book a chance and, and maybe you'll have the opportunity to change your change your mindset or change your opinion based on what you read. So I think like you mentioned, a lot of people are very rigid in their ways. So we all have to stop just saying, okay, what I'm thinking is law and is fact, and kind of opening up your mind to different viewpoints. That's right, and, and not, I don't expect someone with completely different viewpoints than mm -hmm. I have to read my book and say, wow, yeah. he said he said 10 things, I now agree with those 10 things. If I can get them to really have an open mind about one thing, or two things, it's like uh, my daughter-in-law is a vegan, and, and, and you know, she said, you don't have to just, everyone doesn't have to be 100% vegan. Just think about not eating meat one day a week. That will help the situation and probably your health. No, that, that makes total sense. It's You're not going to, I guess, change someone's whole mindset or their opinion. But if you get them, you know, leaning a little more towards the right direction or or something positive, I feel like it's it's your book's done its job. So now back to final notice and, and the whole writing process. How long did it really take you to write final notice? Well, the, the writing took about two months. Okay. Um, and, and, and that was, you know, interspersed with a lot of other things that I, I get involved with. But... That was easy, and that just happened. That came out quickly, um, but, but the editing was a different story. <laughs> um, the, the rewrites and looking at it again, the, the, the timing issue, the flows, uh, some feedback from a, a number of people that I engaged as beta readers for me. So that editing process um, took took a very long time. Another. Mm -hmm. Uh, or probably another four months on top of that. Wow, okay, so so now how long did it take you to decide that you wanted to write Final Notice? I read your bio and I know you've had many different careers and you weren't always writing, so when did you really decide in your life, you know what, it's, it's my turn to write a book? Um, I, I guess <laughs> right, after I, right after I retired, mm. uh, um, almost two years ago, okay. um, I woke up that morning and I had no email messages and my phone didn't ring <laughs> and I had no planes to catch and I thought hmm what am I going to do I don't want to go play bingo or, or <laughs> something that old people are supposed to do and and I thought I always had this idea in the back of my mind of, of writing a book so I just sat down and I wrote it wow so you didn't you didn't you were on like you know what maybe this is a good idea you're like you know what I'm going for it. I'm just going to write this book. And okay, so even if it was your first book that you you decide, you know, I'm going to sit down and write this. Go back to your to, to your past. Did you always did you find yourself writing a lot even if it was like poetry or short stories? Were you always a writer or is this also something you took up after you retired? Now, I guess I I've, I've been in sales and marketing okay. uh, good part of my career and for the the last number of years well, for the last eight or ten years, I, one of my responsibilities, and, and there were many, but was writing both internal and external newsletters for my management consulting company. Mm. So they were they were all mostly business related uh, issues. Okay, so you were writing, but it wasn't really giving you the complete creative freedom to kind of create your own story and create your own world with with the story of Final Notice. That's right. Yeah, I, I pretty much have to, have to say pretty have to close to the facts uh, with mm. my with my business writing. Mm. You know that that makes complete sense. So, what's what's next for you? Are, are you going to continue writing? Is there a sequel coming out to Final Notice? I'm I'm very excited to hear what's going to happen. Um, yes, there is, um, mm. and it is. It, it may be the last of this of the of the books, but uh, I'm in the process of writing. Final act. Okay. And, and that it, it will it, it will uh, pick up with some of the main characters in in this book, but we'll take it on to a new dimension, and maybe the science fiction gets a little bit more science fiction oh, nice. uh, in the in this next one in terms of what what uh, the watch that which is the star of the mm -hmm. of the book the VT two, which tells you you're gonna you're gonna die in yes. X days. Uh, the VT2 starts getting even smarter. 
Wow. Okay. So now I'm gonna ask you something that 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 I'm sure you've been asked numerous times. But if you could know that you had two to three weeks left, would you want it? <laughs> um, that's good. That's that's also a very good question. <laughs> in addition to what would you do? Um, you know, probably not. Oh. Mm, that makes sense. So why not? Why would you? Is it just is the stress too much? Is the okay now? What I have to do all these different things too much, or do you just want to kind of live a natural life and go when you're gonna go? Yeah, I guess you know, it, in terms of wanting to not know, I the the dream, which I think is everyone's dream, is you go to you go to bed one night and you feel fine and you never wake up. Um, and that's pretty painless, and you have no regrets because you're not around to have those. There regrets. you go. So if if I could, you know, that's the way I'd like to to go out. I mean, the one thing I I know personally that I could not do is what some of my characters in in the book do. Mm. Wow, no, that that makes sense though. I, I I'm, I'm trying to put myself in that spot, and I. I don't know if I'd want to know, and I don't. And if I presented with the knowledge, and I had to know, I don't know what I would do with the, the 30 days or 20 days or whatever it was. So rumor has it you also have a soft spot for dogs as well. And and I'm not gonna tell you my source, but I'm, I've I've heard from very good source that you're you're a big fan of dogs. Why are you, do you feel so strongly about dogs? Dogs represent probably the closest thing to pure joy that you see. Dogs and and, and children. And, and dogs are, are like children in many many respects. When they're out playing, when they're everything about them is just is raw, is pure, mm -hmm. and and they're they are they're they're, they're great pals. They have this uh, unabiding love for you. They they're they're fun to be with. And you know if you if you train them well and they get along with other dogs. Um, a big part of my life is spending time with my dog and at the oh. dog park with other dogs. And um, it's just pure joy. That's all I can I can say. Uh, I could I could not agree more with you, everything you just said. Okay, so to end the interview, I want you to give the OBC viewers one final plea. Why should they buy and read your book? Okay, well, going back to one of the things you said before, even if you even if you have completely different views, uh, give it a chance and open up your mind. Even if you read it and you hate the book. You've done something good and you've donated a dollar that this life will save some kid's life in the future. So, um, yeah, open up your mind and, and be happy in the fact that, that one dollar of your two ninety nine is going to help someone somewhere. No, that's I, I couldn't agree more with what you just said. If, if at least the least thing they do from purchasing this book is donating to some great organizations, then I, I honestly think the purchase is more than worth it. I know I'm gonna keep recommending it to people. I think it's, it's the first of all, the plot sounds amazing beyond you, you doing nice charitable work along with it. But the fact that you're donating back is just, it, it's, it really is amazing. I know, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it out there and hopefully recommend it to some friends. Van, it's really been a pleasure to talk to you. I hope if, if when final act comes out, I hope we could, we could have you on the show again and talk more about it. But once again, thank you so much for coming on it, and it really has been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Adam. I've enjoyed it. No problem at all. And and like, and Van, where can everyone find you on your website, social media? Where can they find you? No, they can find me on. Uh, on well, social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. My on my website, uh, and and one of the easiest things, is if you know the book, it's just finalnoticebook.com. Cool. Um, or if you know my name, my my uh, Twitter handle is Van Fleischer44. Got it. So yeah, there's not. Fortunately, there's not too many uh, like you. There's probably not too many people with our names. Exactly. Hey, I'm glad we can relate on that because trust me, I've yet to meet another Adam Bon Giovanni, and I'm sure you've yet to meet another Van Fleischer. Got that? If if I do come in contact with another Van Fleischer, I'm gonna send him your way, Van. I, I would I would enjoy meeting meeting them at least uh, digitally. 
And I'll do the same for you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you so much, Van. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Every time I get done with these interviews, I'm amazed at the minds and the, the people I get to talk to. And Van, he's the perfect example of taking something, which is an amazing plot line for the book. I When I went over the plot and I was doing some research before the interview, I was like, oh my god, this is un an unbelievable idea. He's not only taking an amazing book, but he's giving a dollar of every three dollars, one third of his earnings, and he's giving one third of it back to gun safety groups. I don't think there's a time in the world we need that more than right now. But Van, it was, it was a pleasure to talk to Mr. Fleischer. He was an unbelievable guy, so much to offer, and you know what, I hope to talk to him in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next Thursday.